Good evening and welcome to Compline. My name is Margaret Stevens. I'm an Associate Minister at St John's Church in Egham. As we come to the end of today, it's good to take this opportunity to come before God and uh, let's just be still as we do that and prepare ourselves for this service of night prayer. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We take a moment to reflect on the day that has passed. Perhaps first to think of those times when we have been blessed, when we have seen God's hand at work and known his presence. Let's just take a moment to Thank him for that first. And then too, we need to bring to him those parts of the day which have not gone so well. Things where we may feel disappointed with ourselves possibly with others, and we need to bring our confession to him. And let's do that now. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sin Heal us by your Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath, our souls are raised to life from death. We come now to our psalm and tonight it's Psalm 60. You have rejected us, O God, and burst forth upon us. You have been angry, now restore us. You have shaken the land and torn it open. Mend its fractures, for it is quaking. You have shown your people desperate times. You have given us wine that makes us stagger. But for those who fear you, you have raised a banner to be unfurled against the bow. Save us and help us with your right hand, that those you love may be delivered. 
God has spoken from his sanctuary. In triumph, I will parcel out Sechem and measure off the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet, Judah my scepter. Moab is my wash basin. Upon Edom I toss my sandal. Over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God? You who have rejected us and no longer go out with our armies. Give us aid against the enemy. For the help of man is worthless. With God we shall gain the victory. And he will trample down our enemies. This psalm is a prayer written in time of crisis, asking for help. And it was written by King David and would have been led by him in the liturgy of the temple and used at difficult times. It begins with lament and it ends with a way forward expressing great confidence in God. And in between we find something very important, a reminder of the promises of God's and God's ability to fulfil those promises. David's great concern is to bring about the establishment of God's kingdom, then the kingdom of Israel. Some of the land promised to Abraham had already been one had been incorporated, but some was proving more difficult to conquer. Between verses 6 and 8, David re-expresses the promises of God using lots of strong imagery. His first mention is of Sechem and Sukkoth, and these were places both to the east and the west of the River Jordan, a reminder that nowhere was within God's plan unconquerable. And this is reinforced in the following verse by reference to four other areas, Gilead and Manasseh, which were on in the east, and Ephraim and Judah to the west. These places were already part of the kingdom and their names rooted the kingdom in the history of the nation, for they were occupied by the main clans of Israel, and their strong presence formed a protection, and the organisation of the kingdom through law and power made it strong. So much had already been accomplished, but here was the problem. Here was the crisis. Moab, Edom and Philistia seemed to be so powerful and were really causing a problem. And yet here, with these pictures, they are no problem. They are conquerable. They will be subdued. They will be brought into the kingdom. This is God's promise. Being thrown off course in any aspect of life is very disconcerting and we have and continue to have much of that to contend with. But God's promises remain for us just as they did for David. When we get wobbly, when we're discouraged, we too can return to the promises of God. Turn to them for ourselves, yes, but also for the building of God's kingdom as we now understand it. In spite of what we see, God's kingdom will come in all its fullness. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
And perhaps we need to hear that, especially at this time, as individuals, but also as a nation and a world. What we see is not all there is. Be encouraged. God will bring his promises to fruition. Amen. So as David uh, looked at God's promises and ex expressed his faith, we express our faith now. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials. And now, tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine. And though the night is here, today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when time was ripe. And though you be silent now, today I believe. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep may rest in peace. And we come to our prayers. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of hope, in these times of change, unite our nation and guide our leaders with your wisdom. Give us courage to overcome our fears and help us to build a future in which all may prosper and share. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We just take a moment now to remember before God any who are known to us who are in need of our prayers tonight.
meet those we have named before you with your presence, your peace and your healing, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray for our daily bread as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And a prayer to make our own. I am placing my soul and my body in thy safekeeping this night, O God. In thy safekeeping, O Jesus Christ. In thy safekeeping, O Spirit of perfect truth. The three who would defend my cause be keeping me this night from harm. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon us and those whom we love, tonight and always. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this service. Good night and God bless.